How's it going everyone, it's Gadget's Boy, welcome to another video. And in this one we'll be taking a look at the Google Pixel 4. So this is my review of the Google Pixel 4. And if you're thinking of picking one up very soon, you should probably watch this video so you know what to expect when you pick up one of these. Without further ado, let's get into it. The Pixel 4 is probably the most leaked device in the history of phone leaks. We basically saw what it would look like and some of the features before launch. Google even tweeted its own device before, but what we didn't know was what the software would be like. I've been using the Baby Pixel 4 for a while and here's what I love about it, things I love about it, and some of the not so good bits. So if you're thinking of picking one up, it's worth watching this so you know what to expect. The Pixel 4's design has grown on me especially in this also orange colour, basically orange, I have here. It has soft round edges, the back has a matte finish with new camera set up on the top corner. Some may or may not like that but I don't mind it at all because I spend my time looking at the phone screen and not the back anyway. The power button looks cool and it has that nice contrasting colour to the rest of the smartphone. I'd describe the Pixel's design as cool and playful. The front side however doesn't adhere to what we're now used to, so you have big bezels and a big forehead where some of the sensors are placed alongside the front facing camera. The thing for me though is buying a Pixel smartphone now you expect this kind of design unlike if you're buying a Huawei device and you don't get that bezel-less display you'd be disappointed if you know what I mean. But for me when it comes to the Pixel range I I'm just used to this. You notice that Google has removed the fingerprint sensor in favour of a face ID unlock and no headphone jack unlike the 3A. However, overall, the Pixel 4 feels durable and is also IP water and dust resistant, although we don't know the exact certification here. The Pixel 4 is only Full HD Plus with 5.7 inch display size with 441 PPI and I think it's more than enough considering you now get 90Hz refresh rate which makes it super smooth, bright, vibrant, and depending on your display settings, it gives you a good level of color accuracy. 90 hertz the fresh rate is particularly useful when gaming, for example, and you notice it when scrolling and, nav and navigating the device. If you want slightly higher resolution, you should opt for the Pixel 4 XL. Performance is no issue for the Pixel 4 at all. It's rocking the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 with 6 gig of RAM, and this version I have here has 64 gig of internal storage. I actually think Google should have scrapped the 64 gigabytes base level model and just go for 128 gig or 256 gig base storage, as there are other devices on the market with the same price point or if maybe even cheaper, which comes with 256 gig of internal storage and expandable micro SD card uh, feature as well. Having said that, it's super smooth. There's no bloatware, no lags or hiccups at all, even when playing Call of Duty, for example. I even checked the temperature afterwards and it handles it well and the only time it really gets really hot is when capturing video at 4K. Where the Pixel 4 lacks behind is battery. It has 2,800 mAh battery but if you wanted something slightly better then go for the XL version. 2,800 mAh battery is a bit absurd in this day and age which should be getting something bigger especially for a device with 90 hz display and motion sense uh, radar technology there as well. If you want the battery life to last a bit longer then you'd have to not play games which is a bit strange. You'd want to play a game on your smartphone on the go. You'd have to turn off 90 hz refresh rate, use ambient EQ uh, settings as well, and also turn off that motion sense uh, because motion sense drains battery. Having said that though, it supports fast charging via both cable and you can do that wirelessly as well. So you can just carry a power pack with you if you really worry about your battery life. One argument I've heard that I've read somewhere though is maybe it helps with digital wellbeing. If your battery doesn't last all day long, maybe you'd actually concentrate more on interacting with people around you. 90 hertz of fresh rate can also be forced to be on at all times if you're going to develop a mode and adjust those settings, but I would advise against it. The Pixel 4 comes with a new feature called Motion Sense, which uses a Project Solid Radar chip, which was introduced back in 2015. With Motion Sense, you can do three things. You got presence, reach, and gestures. With presence, it just creates awareness around the smartphone, so when you're near it, it knows that you're near it enough to activate th certain things. Reach just helps face unlock work faster, so when you reach for your smartphone, the sensors switch on so it's ready to unlock your uh, smartphone using your face, which is pretty cool. And you can also use it to reduce uh, alarm sound as well, so when you reach for your phone to turn off your alarm, the volume starts to reduce. Gestures are quite limited for now, you can use it to wave by ch you can use the chain track on on your on your phone when you're playing music by swiping left or right or you can go up and down if you prefer you can also use it for quieting your alarm down or snoozing as well as far as i know google won't be opening this up to third party developers for now but the future is bright who knows what's what's going to come in the next version of the google smartphones from my experience with it motion sense works really well and even face id unlock works super fast although at this point of this review, uh, it doesn't feel secure because it still works with your eyes closed. So I'm hoping that Google will release a software update to fix this very quickly. 
I also find that Merchant Sense can be e easily activated when listening to music with your screen off, which I find annoying. So if I'm close to it and I accidentally wave or do something, or maybe if I'm dancing around my phone, it picks it up and changes track, which is annoying. Finally, the Pixel Force camera is hands down one of the best there is for photography, uh, but not so much for video. I still think my iPhone 11 Pro takes the crown for that video capabilities. With a new telephoto lens, you get better bokeh shots and you can zoom in two times optically or eight times digitally. So this is some sort of like hybrid setup here. There's a lot to do with the camera here, which still makes it one of the best for, for photography. Um, when you zoom in two times, it works really well. It looks great. But when you start to get to eight times, you start to get, uh, it gets more noisy. Uh, it gets noisier and you lose detail, which is what I found. Portrait shots looks amazing still. There's no difference. There's nothing uh, to complain about there. It looks amazing as usual. Uh, the new dual exposure mode, which I really like, also helps to deal with that backlighting issues. And it works in night mode. It works uh, when taking selfies as well, which is pretty cool. Night mode now supports astrophotography, which is something I haven't been able to test. But once you place it on a tripod or prop it against something, you'll be able to open up that exposure for longer. For video, you can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second or lower. It's quite disappointing for content creators because they would have loved to have 4K at 60 frames per second so they can do some post-processing or post-editing if they wish to do so. You also get video stabilization, which works. Works decent in my experience here. And I also wish dual exposure works in video mode. Google Assistant also sees some improvement. You can now get live caption as well on the smartphone by easily switching it on by just tapping the volume rocker and tapping the button for live caption. So this works when speech is de detected when playing games, watching videos, or even listening to music. Although I do find, I found that it didn't work on Netflix for some reason, maybe because Netflix have their own built-in subtitles and that kind of stuff. I'm also gonna try and use it to see if it picks up other languages uh, because obviously I've been using it with English stuff, English content. The live caption stuff works online and offline as well and live transcription for when you're recording in the recorder app, which journalists would really love. That works online and offline as well. And that allows you to also go back and search for different points when from your recorded audio, which is pretty cool as well. Overall, I really wanna love the Pixel 4, but it's lacking behind in some important bits like battery life, I would have preferred an ultra wide angle lens for landscape photography and those architectural lookup shots that I love to take. The front facing camera is not wide enough, but it's still wide. Um, other than that, it's still my favorite for photography, I would say, and night mode is still king on this smartphone. Although sometimes it lacks details when compared to the iPhone 11 Pro. Software is clean and smooth too. Motion sense is cool, but has limited use cases for now, and it drains your battery, so you probably end up turning it off anyway. Life HDR Plus, when using camera, is also very much welcomed. It means now you, what you see is what you get when you're taking your photos. And I know someone's gonna say this, it doesn't have 5G. Um, but like I keep saying online, on Twitter, if you follow me, 5G is not fully there yet. So you shouldn't worry too much about that for now. But if you really care about it, then there are other alternatives out there that you can get for now. So that's it for the Google Pixel 4. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you be picking one up after you've watched this? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe if you're new to this channel and hit that bell notification as well. So you'll be one of the first people to know every time there's a video on this channel. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next one.